Alright guys, this is Dogm with another Minecraft video and today guys we wanna create a infinite toggleable villager breeding station. What does that mean? Well, we have a trading bay here that will give us an infinite supply of villagers to choose from and it is toggleable so we can turn on and off the breeding which is really helpful because yeah the breeding can easily get out of hands. So let's do a quick demo here. You see I've already started the machine, we got villagers in there, they are bred, um, that's enough for me. So if you want to grab some just press these buttons and the minecarts will get some villagers for you, you can interact with. Let's see what this guy offers, oh well, crappy deal. Let's check the other one, also a crappy deal, so you would not be satisfied with that and you want to get rid of these. Um, well, very simple, just press the button here. Lava will pop out of the dispensers and the fire animation is broken in 1.3 I believe, but yeah, takes out the villagers, burn them and you would be able to get a new set. The key feature is um, the door setup on top that represents an infinite villager breeding design and by sending the villager up and down here you can switch it on and off. So right now no breeding will happen but if you want the breeding to start we just press this button here, go somewhere else now we will do some stuff and let them replicate. As soon as the villager is positioned on top, you can see the first hearts popping up in there already. That means the breeding will start. Um, to deactivate it again, just press the button up there, send the villager down. Of course, the breeding was triggered now. It will take a bit um, for them yeah, to <laughs> relax again and stop their breeding frenzy. But after a short while, you will see no hearts in there anymore and you always have a controllable num number of villagers. That's very helpful because, as I said, if there's too many, it can overload the world and you might have lag issues. Alright, I changed the game mode to creative. That will speed up the building process and the tutorial, of course. To start off, make a 3 by 2 hole, which is 3 deep. The positioning of the farm is important. Stay away. Over there you can see a village. Um, yeah, if I move back a bit, you can see, whoop, <laughs> render distance far, I can barely see it. That should be good enough. If you build such a breeding setup too close to an existing village, it can mess up, it, the breeding can be disturbed or it can interfere. Villages can basically link up together and that is a problem. Same goes for the iron golem farm, if you've seen the tutorial about that. And another option would be to knock out all doors in the village that is over there and thus make it no longer a village and the only village you will have around is there, right on top. That is important, so most simple thing is just stay away. 100 blocks, there should be no villager uh, related designs close by. Well, as I said, 3 by 2 hole, 3 deep and dig out two more blocks to the sides and create yourself a little staircase here so you can get in and out of our hole. Next up, put some upside down half slabs in, just like that, to create the area where the villagers will stand on. Now we need to frame it in, just like that. I'm using sandstone, you can use any other building block and create a little yeah, encasement. Now, dispenser in there, two more blocks up in front and put buttons down. Right there, right there and right there. Next step, knock out these blocks. It's just for looks, you can leave the grass there but I prefer to have it um, a bit smooth around my belts. So, we should uh, start to create the pickup system for the villagers. Just put down two power tracks like that, a normal track in the middle. Make sure to put a full block behind here. Um, anything else won't work. It needs to be a full block so we can power this track. If we press this button, we would send the minecart this way now, but it would get stuck because this track is not powered. So simply go below, 
stick out beneath where the power track is and put down a lever from below which can be done now in Minecraft 1.3 and is very helpful for many designs and you end up with something like that power track here, power track there, unpowered and this kind of yeah, separates the two sides of the track if you press already works and that is the basic shape Now we need to make sure no villagers can escape. Well, too high wall should be good enough for that. So put down some stairs. I prefer the stairs here because it makes the design just a bit more compact. But you could use any other block and close it off up in front. Another option would be to use fence, glass panes or leave it open completely. It's all up to you. Last but not least we should yeah, make the place look a bit more pretty and now think about killing villagers when we called them so next up two stairs left and right full block there just beside the unpowered power track and put a dispenser on top now put a block that is a helper block we will remove that block on top knock it out again same thing on whoops, the other side yeah we need to do that because we cannot click on the dispenser now two more buttons if we would use the setup like this we would destroy our tracks if we put a lava bucket in there listen you only can hear the dispenser activate once so the lava would be dispensed flow out and destroy everything we don't need that we only want the lava to appear for a very short time. To do that, get two redstone torches and just stick them right there. And you can hear the dispenser activating, clicking. So let's listen to it again. You could clearly hear two clicks now. And that already finalizes the kill design. Get two lava buckets. You want to put them into the dispensers. Shift click them in. One, two. Let's check it, starts, stops. Tracks unharmed and it's just good enough to kill the villager but not destroy any tracks. To complete this, this setup, just put down two more stairs left and right. Close it off. The villagers will not take damage in here. And of course we need to make sure the villagers cannot jump out. So get some half slabs for example, uh, again this is optional, put them on like this and do the same thing on the other side. For the next part of the build, just go behind your breeding cell, count two blocks away from the dispenser and put down two blocks. This is the platform where the villager will rest on. And now we need to make a staircase, six blocks up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where the villager will rest on. So expand it by two blocks, three blocks I mean, to the sides, just like that. And if you look at the design here, you can compare. So pretty simple so far last but not least put down two blocks right there we should put the tracks in there now and that is also not too complicated power track normal track power track detector track power track normal track power track right power track normal track you can see it pretty simple now we need to take care of um, powering certain areas here so first of all lever here that gives power to this track and we need to power that one as well just stick down here a bit get beneath it put the lever down and you will end up with something like this 
And now we need to make sure the villager cannot escape. So just create a little box around it. You can think of different designs. Just make sure behind the power track right here you have a solid block. And now half slaps and half slap right on top there to make a secure holding bay and throw a minecart in. There we go. Of course it would be um, very helpful if you get another villager already with the trick I was just showing you and put him in there with together with the minecart that makes things a bit more simple. The last and final stage of the build is some redstone but very mellow, not complicated. Just get below your setup here, locate where your power track is and it should be around there. All right, block, torch on top. And you can see already it was sending the villager up and he was not hurt. To send him back, the uh, button just goes there. If you want to send him down, it would work, but now you would send him up and down all the time because, yeah, of course, right now, this is permanently powered. Dig down one more block so you can put a redstone connection line to there and just break through to the area beneath your spawning cell. Dig up a bit and you should be able to locate the area where the button must go. Let's come around so you can imagine where it is. The button is there and yeah, we need to draw power from that. To do that, well, can do it in here, throw some redstone in, connect it down. The half slabs won't break it, that is why we were using half slabs in there. And now we need to invert the signal, so bring out the redstone a bit more to here. Make sure to yeah, connect it before. Torch, block, two more pieces of redstone and now this area is unpowered. So let's try it out. We should already be up and running. Sand village down. Goes down, he stays in there. If you want to call the villager back up again, let's do this. Press the button and voila, villager is back up. Already working nicely. Now we need to trigger our dispenser because yeah, I want to have the water in here that streams out to the sides which makes it easier for us to pick up the villager. That is very easily done. You can see we have the detector track right here sitting on this block. So if we put a torch now in there, you can hear the dispenser activating. And if we send the villager up and down, where is he up at the moment? Listen. Yeah, you can see it's activating the water. Or yeah, there's no water in there, but it's activating or triggering the piston and uh, the dispenser, excuse me. Yeah, and now only thing left to do is we need to go up there and create a village out of that thing. So get in your inventory or craft you some doors, better say. Where are they? Let me find them. It's very helpful that you can search for things now. One, two, three. We need at least six doors, otherwise it won't work. I tried with four. I never saw good success with that. Build up a bit and cover those doors to make it a real village. If you don't have the blocks on top, you will not have a village. So, and that's basically it. Time to test it. Okay, I've knocked out the doors on the other breeding cell here to make sure we got no interference. Last thing left to do is get to the dispenser, get a water bucket in there and now you have to check when the villager is down the water should be activated. Right now we don't have that situation so just go behind the setup you could have a button here that's the best put it to the torch and activate it once and let the water flow all right, perfect. And now we should try and see if we can activate breeding. So activate the machine, get the villager up there, 
is in there and water should be deactivated, yes. And after a short while we should see the first hearts coming up and they should start to breed. Keep in mind, if you start up a breeding cell like that and you only started with two villagers, it can take up to 20 minutes um, until you get the first uh, breeding results, maybe 10 minutes, um, but you should see hearts popping up pretty soon. Also make sure um, when you initialize the cell, you know, if you go too close, you see, now they're looking at me, they want to interact. So stay away so they don't get distracted and can fully focus on the breeding. Okay, yep, breeding starts. As I said, you need to be patient and you can help things if you put more villages in there for a start. Um, for the end, I suggest some cosmetics. You could, for example, completely cover up this area here. With half slabs, that's what I did. And some stair designs connected like this. <laughs> oh man, this freaks me out with these lighting glitches. And Another cool thing I found was just to take a um, glowstone lantern, put it right there so you have some lighting for the villagers, so they don't feel that lonely and dark. Yeah, and close it off. Um, I used some stairs and whatnot. Yeah, feel free to be creative there. And it's all done. We could... Yeah, we got the villager up there. We can send them away. water stream should start. Ah, and we see a baby one. Yeah, if you pick these, well, kill them right away. You can't trade with them or just wait. And yeah, all you need to do now is put your minecarts in there. One, two, and you should be able to trade. Got one here, got one there. Trading, killing, having fun. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. Make sure to tell your friends about it if you think it's useful. Show some love. Much appreciated as always. Bye bye guys. I'm out.